Now joining me now live virtually as we analyze this situation is a senior research researcher and analyst at Budget Foundation, Vahala Kwaga. Mr. Kwaga, good morning. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Good morning and thank you for having me. Let me put you on the hot seat now. First, let me start by asking, what is your reaction to this development? How does it come to you? Is it a welcome development or there is more to it? Uh, I, I believe you are referring to the fuel subsidy and the yeah, yes. fuel subsidy remover, yes. Yes, I would say that it is welcome and not welcome and I'll give my reasons. So it's been very a common assertion that subsidies benefit the rich and the high income earners as well as those that smuggle Nigeria's petroleum. If you take a look at a, a map of the West African subcontinent and you look at the average prices of petroleum products, you will see that they sell for, you know, in excess of 400 naira uh, to about 600 naira thereabouts. So Nigeria was actually selling hers for quite, you know, quite low amounts. And because of this subsidy, because of how opaque the market had been, you know, miscreants had capitalized on the poor security uh, infrastructure of petroleum distribution and smuggled these goods to sell them outside. Again, like I mentioned, it's the rich that benefit from subsidy because of the high number of vehicles they use, you know, and uh, their, you know, generating sets. So the argument has been made that subsidies, in many instances, do not really benefit Nigerians. So in principle, or rather do not benefit uh, low-income and even uh, middle-income Nigerians. So in principle, subsidy removal is welcome. However, there is a very low citizen-to-government trust. And this trust deficit has been exacerbated by years of poor administration, years of corruption, years of you know the lack of due prosecution of corrupt political officers, and even looking at the average uh, politician or political office holder and the way they live their lives and flaunt their wealth, you know Nigerians, you know would be hard pressed to 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 see them actually reduce you know this ostentatious lifestyle. So the question is, what did the government, this current government, this current government, President Bola Tinubu, put in place before removing the fuel subsidy? It's I mean we should make no mistake. The market is going to react very, very instinctively to pronouncements and statements by the president. Uh, president Bolton will need to uh, realize that everything he says publicly will be taken as policy and the market will react accordingly. You know, unfortunately, perhaps due to poor communication, the, the way that you know, uh, political decisions are communicated in Nigeria generally you know, leaves a lot to be desired. Hence, Nigerians tend to panic a lot. And a lot of what you saw, or what we all saw yesterday, was panic buying and maybe even panic selling, you know, as a result of petrol retailers, you know, thinking or asking themselves how this subsidy removal will affect the cost at which they purchase their own product, you know, and, you know, the cost that they will have to pay to transport their products, you know, from the ports to other parts of Nigeria. I would also like to mention that budget, my organization, has been very, very clear on its position regarding subsidy. Subsidy should be removed. However, and this is the critical part, it needs to be immediately replaced or the monies that have been saved from subsidy removal need to be put in some form of citizen's compact that the government promises and, you know, is in the process of providing resources and goods and services that sort of ameliorate the impact of this subsidy removal. So what uh, Tinubu perhaps should have done was, you know, sort of wait and begin to put these things in place and ensure that the accounting is as transparent as possible before removing it so as to forestall any suspicion that this government Mr. is unprepared. Kwaga, permit me, Mr. Kwagwa, permit me to butt in here at the moment. Um, you said that the um, Bola Tinubu administration has commenced removal of fuel subsidy. I beg to differ there. There is no immediate implementation to that. The president, in his inaugural address, made a statement. He said, and I quote, 
according to reports that I got, it's, there, there is no provision for subsidy payment in the budget that was passed by the National Assembly. So which means no more subsidy. That was the statement it made. Now, I want to ask you now, why is there a different interpretation to the statement made by the president um, from, from, from the aspect of the, in, um, the petroleum marketers? Why is there that form of misinterpretation? Because we, the, 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 the citizens, are the ones suffering from it. And now there seem to be what I will regard to as a communication lacuna, a communication um, 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 bridge between the president, what the president said, interpretation now, and what the marketers perceive it to be. I want to understand now, what, who is to bridge this communication gap now, especially now that we don't have cabinet members, so that the hardship that Nigerians are facing at the moment can be reduced? I mean, if, if we're going technically, uh, subsidy actually had been removed prior to his inauguration. Uh, the, the payments, the monies available to pay subsidies, you know, are not even available anymore. So technically speaking, you know, it had uh, gone quite some time ago. Uh, but like I said, you know, there was poor communication of government policy in this instance. And you know, I started my comments by saying that the market will react instinctively to pronouncements by the president. So the, the responsibility now is for the, I mean, I suspect that the boards and the governors, the administrators of the various uh, petroleum regulatory uh, bodies are still, you know, um, many of them are still in office unless their tenures have expired or, or ended. Or at least permanent secretaries in those agencies need to ensure that petroleum, the sale of petroleum products is regulated accordingly. Uh, I think it was just this morning I saw uh, some circulars, I think sent out by government agencies that have put price caps on the amount at which retailers can sell petroleum products. So the responsibility definitely is on the government, is on the sister agencies to the NNPC, the uh, downstream regulatory authority, uh, to be precise, and I guess uh, departments within the NNPC responsible for petroleum price regulation. So they are the ones that are meant to go to petroleum retailers and ensure, you know, on the pain of closing them down, that they are selling petroleum products, you know, within a specific price uh, band.